So you probably want your vocals to sound bright and airy, but instead they're just sounding harsh. This video is for you. How about that new intro song? That song is called Slam Band. It's by my band Broke Royals. We just released it yesterday. So if you've gotten any value from me in this channel and if you like the music I'm mixing at all, then definitely go check out that song. There's a link in the description below. As I said, it just came out yesterday and that first week of streams means a lot in terms of other playlists that we'll get onto and all of those good things. So if you would, just take a few minutes and go check out that song. And if you dig it, maybe just play it a few times over the next week, it would mean the world to me. But let's go and talk about today's video. So this video is a third video in a six part series where I'm showing you how to create a pro vocal sound in GarageBand. It's completely possible as long as you've taken the time to get a good recording to get a professional sounding vocal in GarageBand. The key is to work through all the steps that you need to hit intentionally. So in addition to this six part video series that I've done, I also want to give you a bonus gift. I've put together a completely free vocal mixing checklist, a pro vocal checklist that walks through all the steps that I'm covering in this video series. So you can just quickly reference back to that anytime you're working on vocals in the future and you won't have to keep coming back to the videos and revisiting all the concepts. You'll have it all quickly there for you. So it's completely free from the link in the description below. Be sure to pick that up. Let's go and jump into today's video on using a de -esser or dynamic EQ to address harsh frequencies on your vocal. All right, so we're in GarageBand and our song is where we left it after we did our EQ last week. So we have that here. And with our EQ, I mentioned that as we started to add brightness, we started to hear the S's cut through a little bit more and occasionally start to sound a little bit harsh. So pay attention to that as I play a little section of the song here. Now look in this frequency range right here. Every time there's an S, It's not necessarily bad. Let me dry your ears to it a little bit more. I'm gonna exaggerate this EQ bump here just a little bit and listen to how much the S's and the T's cut through every time he hits one on this vocal here. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off this. I'll come back on Monday to the office. Right, definitely starts to have a little bit uh, exaggerated S sound throughout those parts. And maybe we actually want a little more brightness on our vocals. We'll determine as we continue to move through this process. But either way, we're already starting to get, you know, big peaks on those S's and T's that we want to try to contain a little bit. And so the tool that was originally developed to address this was called a de -esser. And there's one built into GarageBand under Dynamics, the de -esser. But there's not a lot going on with this. It's a little hard to tell exactly what you're doing here. It can be an effective tool and you definitely can reduce the S's. So if we go in here, the way this one would work is this is the frequency here that we're seeing on the EQ. And so if we just look at where we're seeing these big spikes every time there's an S or a T, Only darkness, yeah. we can see it's right around eight, maybe 9,000 Hertz. We can see that list up there on the EQ. So if we go to the de or then set this somewhere around, let's say 9,000 Hertz. Galileo set me off we can suppress it, right? So listen to his S's now. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off. Right, that's pretty extreme. So then we can scale that back and get it a little bit more contained. Off this, I'll come back on Monday to the office. Right, so that's that can be effective. But what I've found over time is to really drill in on any vocal, what has helped me more than anything is using a dynamic EQ instead. So there's this great one from Tokyo Don Labs called the TDR Nova. This is completely free and this thing is a powerhouse. I did a video on this just recently and I didn't know at the time you actually have a frequency analyzer which shows you the sound that's going on. That's what we have going on with the EQ here. This is called a frequency analyzer. There is actually one built into TDR Nova but you have to turn it on. So over here where it says off, you just need to select in and that's gonna show you what's going on with this vocal. So let's just loop a little section of this vocal where there's a lot of S's. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me up. There's quite a few through here. So we'll just loop around here. No more seasons, only darkness. Okay. So now that we have a section with a lot of S's, 
we're looking up here on this frequency analyzer to see when those big spikes happen and at what frequency range. So similar to what we were doing on our channel EQ, we're doing that here, but this is a different type of EQ. What this EQ allows us to do is turn down specific frequencies only when they get too loud on a source. It's called a dynamic EQ, and that's functionally what the de is was doing as well. So even if you want to use the de you can just use this as a visual representation of what's going on. But this tool alone has helped me get more precise de in a way that I'm much more confident in because I can see exactly what's happening and I can see how this tool is addressing it. So you'll see that as we go through setting this in this video. So as we let this play no here, more seasons, only we can see it spiking up here set me up again no around 9,000, maybe up to even 12,000. Let's actually loop a slightly longer section just so it's a little less repetitive here. No more seasons, only and what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this EQ point here and we're going to turn on the threshold. As we bring this knob down, you will see this blue line appear. And what this blue line is, is a threshold. And anytime the sound passes this threshold, this one EQ curve is going to turn down. So as I bring this way down here, look what happens every time he hits an S. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off this. i come back. Right, so we can really, really see what's happening there. We can see it actively turning down, but it's also turning down anytime any of this is happening too. So we need to get this a little more precisely set. We're gonna do that by switching over here to a bell curve. And we're going to really more precisely set this position. So we're gonna move this point to where we want it, bring our Q up, which is just making it narrower. And then now let's see what frequencies this affects when he hits S's. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off this. I'll come back on Monday to the office. Right, so that's more precisely catching those S's. This is pretty cool. You can really see what's happening now. And we can spend a little bit of time tailoring it and making sure that it's always happening when we want it to, how we want it to. There's a couple other features that you should know about. The attack time here is how quickly it's gonna clamp down. Because we're trying to address the S's as soon as they happen, we want this to attack as quickly as possible. So we'll just bring this, if you just grab it and turn it down, pull it down, it's gonna bring it down to the fastest attack time. No more seasons, only darkness. Now, I'm still getting a little bit more than I want in terms of other words that maybe aren't just S's. So we're gonna make the Q a little bit tighter, try to tighten up this line here. I'm gonna make this really tight. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off this. I'll come back on Monday to the office. Right, so now we're starting to get really precise, but we also want to let it release more or less as quickly as it can. So attack is how quickly it turns it down, release is how quickly it lets off it. As soon as it's really passed, for the most part, we want it to let off. So a really fast release would be anywhere down here around 10 milliseconds, that's insanely fast. This can go all the way up to three seconds. So that would be really slow, look at this. No more seasons, only darkness. Really slowly returning, right? We can see how quickly that's going back up. We wanna set this a lot faster than that. So we're gonna bring this back down to probably somewhere around anywhere 50 to 100 milliseconds. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off this. I'll come back on Monday to- We don't want it to be turning down really after he's past the S. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off this. I'll come back on Monday to the office. Right, okay, so now we've got this turned down. Now, on this vocal, we're hearing those S's around this, you can see down here, around 10 and a half kilohertz, but there could be other places where we're hearing that S. And a really cool tool on this specific EQ is that you can band solo. So I can click right here once I've selected a point and just listen to what happens at that specific band. No more seasons only so I can use this, I can set it a little bit tighter and I can try to find anywhere else where those S's are really cutting through. No more seasons only darkness, Galileo set me off this, I'll come back on Monday to the abyss. So this is still catching it for sure. Let's go even higher up here. also up here. So again, this is right around this main curve, but we can use this one to start getting really precise, turn the band solo off, and actually tailor in at a couple different points here. So I'm gonna turn the threshold on, we're gonna turn this cue up so it's really, really tight. 
We'll bring our threshold down by turning this knob down. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo Turn our attack time to be super fast. This, I'll come back on Monday to the office. Turn our release to be around 50. No more seasons, only darkness. Galileo set me off this. I'll come back on Monday to the office. Right, okay, so now we're starting to tailor in just a little bit there. We don't need to totally get rid of this S. It's most harsh right around here, right around this 10K line, but we're still hearing it around this six and a half kilohertz line right here, 6.2. Let's listen to this one more time. No more seasons, only darkness, Galileo. And then if we were really hearing it again higher, we could also address it up higher. Sometimes you'll hear it up 12 kilohertz, even higher. Sometimes you'll hear it as low as about 3,500 hertz. That would be somewhere around here. So if we listen here in solo, no more seasons, only make this tighter. I don't hear it as harshly there, but there definitely is some of it there. So if you feel like it's harsh there, no then you could also have a third cut right there. So you can get really precise in here. Now you wanna be careful not overdo it. So how do you tailor this to you know cut but not get too crazy? Well, there's a couple little things you can do. You can adjust the threshold to be a little bit higher. So no more seasons, only darkness, that's gonna tell it to turn down a little bit less. But the main way that you can do it is with this ratio. So right now we're at two to one. I'm gonna bring this threshold to be a little bit no higher. No more seasons, only darkness, but I do wanna make sure I'm getting every S. No more seasons, only darkness, Galileo set me off this outcome. Right, okay. And then we could make it really extreme here. No more seasons, only darkness, That's a little too extreme. But we are just catching the S's, but it's now cutting it even more. So if you really harsh sounding S's that really need to be turned down, no you can scale this ratio up. In our case, it just needs to be a subtle amount of reduction. So we're just going to keep it around that two to one on this ratio. No more seasons, only darkness, Galilee. And then the last thing that you can check just to make sure that you're getting all your S's is gain reduction delta. So this button over here, when you enable this, the plugin will only play for you what it's actually turning down. So we should only hear S's. Kind of cool, right? All we can hear is those little S's. I turned it up a little bit in the video there to make sure that you could really hear it, but it's a lot quieter in my headphones as I'm listening to it there because it's only playing what's actually being turned down, which is a really cool function just to make sure that you're only getting the S's. Way more advanced than we could do with that de or plugin, right? No more seasons, only darkness, Galileo set me up. And now if I wanted this vocal to be brighter, I could even add a little bit more brightness to it with the EQ and we could even exaggerate a little bit more. You could also do this, what I would typically do probably is throw another EQ on after it. And we have our main EQ going into the TDR Nova that's DSing and then we have another EQ after no it. And just play around with that and tailor it to get it where we want it to be. I don't know if this needs one, so I'm gonna go and turn that back off. But you can see how powerful this is, right? You no longer have to worry about those harsh S's and T's, those sibilant sounds. You can address those individually, but still have that bright, airy vocal sound on the rest of your vocal. Really, really cool, really, really powerful. It's worth noting that not every vocal recording is the same. Not every person has the same amount of sibilance in their voice. Not every microphone picks it up the same. So it's gonna vary a little bit person to person. Let's look really quickly at one other vocal that I've done, just so you can see the subtle differences on this other vocal DSing. Okay, so here we have another vocal, and this vocal, as you can see, we have the TDR Nova now before the EQ in this case, which is sometimes the position you wanna have it in. And then I have our main EQ, and I'm adding a lot of brightness here. And look at how similar this curve is, actually, to the curve we have in another song. We have a little bit of a bump to add a little body, we're cutting out some of the mud, a little bit of presence, and then a lot of airy brightness at the top. Okay, so listening to this vocal here, look at what this TDR Nova is doing in terms of de -assing. Instead of crying at the table, so you have a really specific frequency here. This one's around 3,800 hertz, kilohertz, away. And then other than that, I just have one that's more general than the high frequencies. Without this on, put this on. 
And that just cuts out those S's and makes sure that they're not getting in the way of the air that we want to have on our vocal. So what do you think? Is this maybe a missing step from your mixing process? Addressing these harsh frequencies on your vocals? This is something that I missed for a long time. I don't even want to say how long. And part of it is because the de as a plugin is kind of confusing to use. When I switched over to using a dynamic EQ to address this, it made way more sense to me because I could visually see what was going on. My head could wrap around it. That was a game changer for me. So how cool is that TDR Nova? And the fact that that thing is free, crazy. So be sure to pick that up. It's really going to help you out. Speaking of helping you out, be sure to grab my pro vocal checklist like I mentioned at the beginning. This checklist is going to walk through everything we're covering in this video series so that you can refer back to it and easily remind yourself of the steps that you need to be doing to get your vocal to sound professional. It's completely free from the link in the description below so be sure to grab it. Before we go, I want to hear from you. Were you already DSing on your vocals or is this totally new to you? And if you were, were you using that TDR Nova or a dynamic EQ or were you using a de -esser. Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to go stream Slam Band by my brand Broke Royals. It's really going to help me out. If you're watching this in the future, still stream it if you like it from this intro and you're about to hear more in the outro. If you dig it, go check it out. There's a link in the description below for that as well. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.